Hi everyone, I'm Diane Thomas, and I'm here with the beautiful Connie Francis for her very first live virtual book signing. And uh, Connie and I have known each other for about seven years. And uh, how did we meet Connie? You began a radio show called A Visit with Connie. Mm -hmm. And you played my music every day, uh, every Wednesday and Thursday mm -hmm. for an hour. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you celebrated my birthday with a three hour celebration every mm -hmm. time I had a birthday. Mm -hmm. And Baltimore Net Radio has been very good to me. We love you it. introduced me to my own music. Thank you, thank you. Well, tonight we're gonna be signing your new autobiography, Among My Souvenirs, The Real Story. And it's a, a beautiful coffee table quality book. And if you'd like to purchase it this evening, you just go to ConnieFrancisBook.com and you can get your own autographed, Connie, uh, autographed copy from Connie. So um, would you like to start with some questions? Yes. Okay. And as you're ordering, you can submit questions that we will answer this evening if we have enough time. And you could even put your name in for a phone call from Connie this evening. So, you want to get started? Mm -hmm. Okay. Connie, this comes from Robert in Three Rivers, Michigan, and he would like to know which of your movies is your favorite? Well, actually, I only did one movie uh, that I consider a movie, and that's Where the Boys Are. The other three were uh, really terrible movies. And uh, Where the Boys Are helped put Fort Lauderdale on the map. Actually, put Fort Lauderdale on the map. Right, right. I'm sorry I didn't have um, a Jewish boyfriend back then when I was doing the movie. He would have said to me, Connie, why don't you buy a few acres of land here? This movie may make a little noise. <laughs> so it make a little noise. Well, I'm sure your fans have other favorites. I personally like Follow the Boys, and I think I've told you that before because of the music. Yes, you told me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, this comes from Albert Wunsch from Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey. And he would like to know, what is your fondest high school memory? Well, my least fondest high school memory, let's start with that, was the fact that I was not allowed to go to my prom. My father was very strict. He was a vigilante. And he refused to allow me to go to my prom, to ride in a car with a 17-year-old kid. And I said, Daddy, but the kids are renting a limo. He said, I don't care if they rent the Queen Mary, you're not going to the prom. So that was my least favorite memory. But my happiest memories were the beehives. We used to have dances every Friday night, and my father would take me and pick me up while all the other kids went to a pizza after the beehives. But beehive, actually, I got lipstick on the collar of one boy's jacket. That's a true story. How prophetic was that? Really, really. Eventually, it, it became true. <laughs> right. Would you like to start signing? Yes, I'd like okay. to start signing. Okay. So, there you go. Right over here. Right here. Okay. Okay. I think I did about 300 of these already. I know. We've, they've been really selling well. And I'd like to show everyone the book. It's over five pounds. It, um, it's 640 pages. It has over 500 photos. It's um, gold embossing under this beautiful sleeve. There we go. So it, it's quite the book. And uh, everyone will be receiving one with Connie's beautiful signature in the front. Okay. So, um, on to another, uh, that, this actually is a comment, Connie, okay? Mm -hmm. This comes from Larry in Rushville, Indiana. I saw you in concert in Dion in Vietnam in 1967, and I got your autograph then, which I still have and I treasure. Oh, wow. <laughs> but time for another autograph in your new book. Thank you for your support of the troops in Vietnam. I had the choice of seeing your show or Bob Hope's. It was no contest. Connie, any day. I love you. Oh, that's so sweet. And that was Larry from Indiana. Thank you. This comes from Christina in Brooklyn, New York. And she would like to know, um, in the 1960s, what song did you pass on recording that you wished you had? 
a zillion of them. I think that I passed up more hits than songs that I chose that, to record that became hits. For instance, Somewhere My Love, I turned down the lyric. Mm -hmm. Strangers in the Night, I waited too long. I got the song and the publisher said, here's a great song, it's a Grammy winner, Connie, you gotta record it. And I said, I'll record it when I get to Florida. Mm -hmm. And I waited 10 days. And then finally I called the publisher and I said, wow, this song, Strangers in the Night, is fantastic. I'm coming to New York to record it. So he said, since when do you do cover records, Connie? And I said, who would I be covering? The demo singer on the demo? He said, no, Frank Sinatra, he recorded it last night. So I passed up on that. And then uh, a columnist named Bert sent his son to my office with his partner to play me some songs. And they played me some songs into the night. And I, I, th I said, your music is a little too far out there for today's market. Uh, but just keep trucking, fellas, you'll get there. And that was Bert Bacharach and Hal oh, David. David. So Dionne Warwick can thank me yes. <laughs> for that. She was the winner. She was the winner. Definitely. Uh, this comes from Roseanne in Bartlett, Illinois. Hi, Connie. What advice would you give up-and-coming singers of today? Female singers? Uh, it just uh, says up-and-coming well, singers. Well, I adjust myself to female singers. I think they should try to be role models. I know that's what, that's what I tried to be for the Teenagers of America. And um, American Bandstand, uh, which I was a, such a part of, was, uh, was a great uh, vehicle for our youth. It was like one giant big rock and roll party. I don't think there mm -hmm. was a lonely teenager in all of America because of American Bandstand. And the kids wore suits and they weren't allowed to chew gum. And uh, it was a wholesome uh, world that Dick Clark built for the Teenagers of America. And that's what I would suggest that they do, is to become a role model for other teenagers, to emulate. I agree, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, time to sign another one. Okay. Okay. Just sign that right here, okay. And... Um, just my name? Just your name. Okay. Okay, great. This comes from Carol in Rosemead, California. And she says, did you ever have any children, Connie? And if yes, what are their ages? I have one son. His name is Joey, and he's 43. That's hard to believe. You don't look a day over 43 yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll tell him when he comes in. Uh, okay. This comes from Linda in Oceanside, New York. My late cousin Jack Keller wrote your number one hit, Everybody Somebody's Fool. Do you remember Jack? Of course I do. That was the biggest record I ever had, believe it or not, mm -hmm. internationally, the biggest record I ever had, and it was number one in the United States. And it also was uh, recorded in German called Die Liebe ist ein seltsames Spiel. Love is a funny game. Mm -hmm. And it won the award for the best song in Europe for right. the year. Right. So Jack Keller, I thank you very, very much for that song. Yes. He also wrote the follow-up to that, which was also a number one hit, My Heart is a Mind of Its Own. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Jack Keller. Absolutely. He wrote it with Howie Greenfield, right. Neil Sedaka's partner. Right. This comes from Lawrence from Mission... Vijo, California. Uh, he just wants to say, uh, Hi, Connie. We love your music very much. What is your favorite song that you always love to sing? I, I think my favorite song is Mama. Mama. I, I, think, I think Diane, because it touched more people throughout the world than anything I've ever recorded. Okay. And because so many people identify with it. So many people identify with it. Okay. And I love singing it. I love singing big ballads, but I love singing that particularly. And especially when I lost my mother, it was very, very difficult to sing. Right. It's a beautiful song, and a lot of people play it, unfortunately, when they lose their mother. Yes, I, brings, I know that. Yeah. This is from Neil from Carlisle, Cumbria. Out of all your song, excuse me, that's duplicate. Uh, Joseph from Bristol, Rhode Island. Hi, Connie. What part of Italy does your family come from? My mother's family comes from Avellino, from Naples, and my father's family comes from Calabria. 
Kabados, the people. They have hard heads in Calabria. <laughs> That's what they're known for. So they're calabresis, right? They're calabresis. Which are hard-headed. Right. They're yes. hard-headed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we have just a comment here from Jacqueline from Burbank, California. And she just says, no question, Connie, but I just want to tell you that I thank you so very much for your songs. Thank you. And this comes from Marshall in Modesto, California. Do you have a favorite charity? My favorite charity is called Ethos. I started Ethos. It means effectively treating our heroes, our survivors, and it's to help our veterans, especially those suffering from PTSD. And you're also helping, on a local basis, the Miami, Miami homeless veterans, aren't yes, you? Yes, yes. We have the lowest rate of homeless veterans anywhere in the country in Miami. And you're very active with them. Uh, this comes from Brandon in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania. Hello, Connie. My name is Brandon. I am 21, and I am a big fan of yours. My question is, out of all the celebrities you have met and been around, who is the most memorable? Bobby Darren. Of course. How did, we know, <laughs> how did I know you'd say that? <laughs> yes, he was the most memorable. The most memorable. Um, okay, this is a tough one, considering what we're going through right now. In Parkland, here in Parkland. Yeah. Uh, this comes well, Parkland is finally on the map for all the wrong reasons. It was, it's, it's, it was known as the safest community in Florida right. before last Wednesday, right. uh, Valentine's Day. And it's a tragedy that we're all finding very hard to cope with here. Yeah, that, that was James' uh, question from Belvedere, New Jersey. And he's inquiring about you being the national spokeswoman for mental illness. What are your thoughts on uh, the conversation around these uh, mass shootings? What possibly do you think is the solution? Well, there are a lot of things that need to be done. First of all, the laws need to be more stringent with who gets guns. Uh, there has to be a strict uh, background check on who gets guns. Uh, uh, I'm a believer in, in the Second Amendment. I believe that we have the right to protect ourselves, but AR-15s are assault rifles, and they should not be sold in stores, and they should not be, they, they should not be sold. And I think that, uh, uh, unfortunately, the FBI dropped the ball on this one. There were 39 red flags that were raised with the Nicholas Cruz and uh, failed to uh, follow through on that. Although I have great respect for the FBI, Someone missed the ball in this one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, moving on. Connie, this comes from Rudolph in Uniontown, Ohio. During your world travels, um, which place or city did you enjoy most visiting? Italy. I don't even have to stop and think twice. Every part of Italy is like a picture postcard. And um, I wouldn't mind living there half the year. If I had the choice, right. I, I I love I love Italy. Well, you speak fluent Italian, don't you? And I speak Italian, but not certainly not, not fluent. Not fluently. No, no, I've forgotten most of my Italian. But if you go to sing a song, you've got the uh, lyrics. Yeah, down. definitely. It's right here. Right. You want to sign another one? Sure. Bella Italia. You know the books; they have portraits in it, um, personal. Um, get-togethers, photos with you and celebrities. There's poems, there's song lyrics, there's personal letters. I believe there's some Bobby Darren letters in there, aren't yes, there? Yes, there's some letters that Bobby wrote. And yes. some of your record albums, the covers are in there, and interviews. It's, it's actually quite amazing book. I think, how many pictures have we got in there? I think there's something The count out. was over 500. Yes, there are over 500 photographs. Many of them never published before. And this is so heavy. You have to have muscles to read this book. You could, you know, do that's why I want the ebook to come out as soon as possible. And that'll be out shortly. Yes. Okay. Um, this comes from Charlene in East Brunswick, New Jersey, and she, my home state. Yes. <laughs> she says, "Was it difficult recording your songs with the two different vocals, the double vocals?" No, it wasn't. First of all, I went to arts high school, and and that they had courses there that were college-level courses, and I played the accordion since the age of three, 
So I knew music, I knew how to read music. But I also emulated Patti Page because aside from uh, Les Paul and Mary Ford who began the double voices on recordings, Patti Page's, most of her hits were done with the double voice and I, she was one of my favorites. And you've done several yes, double voices. Yes, have a piece of pizza, Eric. <laughs> we just sent for pizza. Yeah. And we just finished Scrabble before this, right? Yes. And I lost terribly. I'm a, I have a black belt in Scrabble. Don't, don't feel bad. Well, okay, I'll, I'll try not to. <laughs> Listen, we have um, one of the um, people who p purchased your book, and his name is Daniel from Rhode Island. He's a music teacher, and this book is for his class. There you go. Oh, that's great. He's on what the speaker. His name? his name is Daniel from Rhode hi, Island. Hi, Daniel. Hi, Connie. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Good. I'm calling you from Lincoln, Rhode Island, on behalf of my students at Lincoln Central Elementary School. And uh, we talk a lot about the movie, uh, the music of the 50s and 60s, and how it how it changed America and kind of shaped shaped the direction we were going in. Yes. And uh, I had them uh, write a few questions for you today in case I was able to get you on the phone. <laughs> And uh, I'm hoping that uh, you're willing to answer a few of them. Sure. Uh, Do we have time to answer a few of them? Okay, go ahead, Daniel. Uh, from Miss Mativia's class, Chase asks, what was it like to perform for the Queen of England? She was very pleasant. I was, I was ple pleasantly surprised. She was, uh, seemed very down to earth. And so was Prince Charles. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Prince Philip, um, excuse me. Yeah. Victoria asked, who inspired you to pursue a singing career in the first place? My father. My father, yeah. my father, want, actually my father wanted me to have my own accordion school of music when I grew up. Sorry to disappoint you, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, the accordion is a great instrument. But, well, the uh, accordion uh, was, was like a rite of passage. All Italian girls who had an Italian father who was living had to play the accordion. And we had right. to drag that thing around with us wherever we went. It went in the trunk of the car. And people who were forced to listen to me play. Wow. Uh, can, do you have time for one more? Sure. Caleb asks, what did it feel like, um, we read that early in your career, you know, you got a lot of, uh, the, the, the record companies rejected you. Uh, it kind of took a little while to get to your career. Uh, on its feet, what did it feel like and, and how did you pursue through that to become one of the greatest? Well, I had a father who wasn't going to take no for an answer. And, and uh, after being turned down by every record company in America, finally, uh, the last company that my manager uh, brought my records to was a company called MGM. And the president of the company had a nephew named Freddie. And one of the songs that I recorded on my demo date was Freddie. And he thought it would be a nice present for his nephew. So he signed me to a recording contract. And that's how I got my first recording contract. At Columbia, Mitch Miller said, save your money, boy. She sounds like 50,000 other girl singers. <laughs> Thanks, Mitch. <laughs> but you stuck with it? I stuck with it. You have to have a, a thick skin. And if you want to be in yeah. show business, you have to be able to take a lot of rejection before, before anything else, uh, positive happens. Right. Well, I want to let you know it's an honor and privilege to speak with you tonight. <laughs> thank you, Daniel. And, and say hi to the kids of, in your class for me. On behalf of my students, thank you very much. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What a nice call. That was wonderful, Connie. Yes, wasn't that great? Yeah, to think that... Our I kids. went to one of the schools around here, Diane. I, I went to the third grade school in Parkland to mm -hmm. visit one of the classes, and the schools here are so wonderful. Oh, that's that's cool. why this is such a tragedy for us. I know. Such we've, a tragedy. We've been hearing helicopters all day long just flying over the, the home here in yes. Parkland. Yes, It's dreadful. Uh, something happy here. Yes. This is from Mark in Boston, Massachusetts. Hello, Miss Francis. Which of the many styles of music you perform do you prefer? Your great up-tempo pop and rock hits or the beautiful ballads? I like the ballads. The ballads. I like ballads with big notes. I call them my money notes. 
<laughs> of course you do. <laughs> Great answer, Connie. Now this is from Ken Slavin in San Antonio, Texas. Hi, Ken Slavin in yes. San Antonio, Texas. He's a great jazz singer. He's a great he jazz singer. He did three singer. CDs himself. Yes, he did. And he also did some of your uh, guest hosting spots on Visit with Connie. But he says, Connie, looking back on your prolific LP recordings, is there anything you wish you had done differently in terms of material or marketing? And are there any plans to re-release your full LP catalog digitally or on vinyl? Yes, there are plans on Concetta Records to release everything I've ever recorded. As far as my choice of songs to record, there was no one really to guide me. There was no A&R men of any note, no producer of, it, of an MGM who would guide me and tell me not to record Do the Twist or Fun Songs for Children, but to record the Harold Arlen songbook or the George Gershwin songbook. Those are things that I should have been doing and I, only, and I regret very, very much not having had that, that input and not doing more of, of the American songbook material. Okay. Yes. This is from Natalie in Sacramento, California. She says, I adore your special album, Connie Francis, Sings the Songs of Les Reed. That's a favorite of all of your fans, I believe. And she says, what is your favorite memory of, uh, that you have with Maestro Les Reed? Well, Les Reed, Sir Les Reed, is a sir, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't know it. He's a gentleman uh, of the highest order. He's the most wonderful man. And I had one of the greatest experiences ever in recording that album in London with Les. Uh, people don't, uh, his name isn't as familiar in the United States as it is in Britain. <clears throat> but Les wrote all of the um, Tom Jones hits, all of the Engelbert hits, uh, of the Petula Clark hit, Kiss Me Goodbye. Uh, all, all, so many of the songs, Delilah, It's Not Unusual, The Last Walls, Les Bicyclettes, all of these wonderful, wonderful songs mm -hmm. that Les Reed wrote. And that, that album was a joy to, to record. Yes. And he, he recorded, I recorded five songs that he wrote just for me mm -hmm. for that particular album. Three Good Reasons. Yes, um, Mr. Love, uh, A Lifetime of Love. love. Um, you bring out the... You, no, that was another one. You bring out the best of the woman and me. It was a different album. Okay. But uh, but for that album, he wrote. Um, That's okay. I was just testing. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'd like to tell everyone again that we do have these books for sale. Um, we do have um, a limited quantity of them. Tonight is the night that we are doing the live autograph signing. So we really hope that you do try to place your order this evening. So, would you like to sign another one, Connie? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I have a great question here for you. Go ahead, shoot. Okay. Uh, Connie, well, I love this question because I love the answer. I know what the answer is. This is from Christina in Brooklyn, New York. What is your favorite song by another artist? Mac the Knife by Bobby Darren. Number one for nine weeks. Okay. Yeah, I love it. I love Bobby as well. Um, what has been the most rewarding aspect of your career in show business? I think of all of the experiences that I had in show business, my visit to Vietnam was the most rewarding. I never felt more needed in my life. I wish I could have stayed there forever. I didn't want to come home. It was an amazing experience. And to me, every one of those guys over there was a hero. And you couldn't stay longer because you're, you travel with live uh, I, I traveled with three musicians and myself. And, right. and uh, we didn't have tracks in those days. And it was Christmas time and they were weary and they wanted to go home to their families and I don't blame them. But I wish I could have stayed and, and uh, with tracks done as many shows as I could have, even more than I did. Mm -hmm. This uh, comes from Kelvin in Singapore. He says, greetings from Singapore, Connie. Can you remember who played that infectious guitar solo in Lipstick on Your Collar? Bucky Pizzarelli. Weren't there two? George Barnes. Okay. So it was either or, but they were both equally yes. as fantastic. Yes, they were, that was one of the greatest guitar solos ever on a pop record. Everyone says that. Okay. This comes from Nancy in 
Baver Falls, Pennsylvania. Who was one of your favorites in your prime, and who were your idols? Frank Sinatra and Judy Garland. Okay, good answer. I love Judy Garland. Um, and then this comment comes from David in Springboro, Ohio, and he just wants to say, you are my all-time favorite female singer, and he signs it Dave, age 71. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, having a stunning career, this comes from Rachel in Union City, California. Having a stunning career, to this day, what brings you the most joy? My friends. Your friends. I'm very rich in my friends. I feel very um, honored to have such good close friends that I've had for so many years, 50 mm -hmm. and 60 years, some of them. And um, uh, that, that gives me the greatest pleasure. And you're, you make friends all the time, every day still, right? I have friends all over the world, yes, I do. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And your fans have become your friends. And my fans have become yeah. my friends. As a matter of fact, one of them is staying here right now, Karen Mataluski mm -hmm. from Milford, Connecticut, is staying with me right now. Good. She was a fan until she got to know me better. <laughs> <laughs> now she's your best friend. <laughs> now she's one of my closest friends. Did we sign this one? Did we sign this one? No. Okay. Okay, and this is one, uh, it's not a question, but uh, it's from Lois from Mascotti in Flora, Florida, and she says, I just want to wish you well and thank you for a lifetime of memories. Thank you, Lois. And uh, right now we have a call from someone in the UK. Would you like to take it? I wonder who it is. I wonder. <laughs> is it Ronnie? Uh, I believe it is. Hi, Ron. Take the phone, Connie. Hi, sweetheart. How are you doing? Hi, Ronnie. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. I just wanted to say, I'm watching the telecast, it's going great, and there's a lot of support for you, and it's wonderful to see the book club flying off the shelf like this. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you for all the help you, you gave me in writing the book. Ronnie did um, all of the editing for the book. And a, a lot more. Don't tell me you're at a loss for words. That's impossible. Speaking to you in the present. But look, have a great time, and as soon as we're ready for volume two, you'll let me know, yeah? Yes, I'll be ready for volume two as soon as volume one goes mm -hmm. off the shelves. <laughs> okay, my darling. Uh, all right, okay. sweetheart. Take Love care. Love you, sweetheart. Bye bye. That was nice. Ron Roberts. That was know. nice. Ron Roberts from the UK. He's the editor of Connie's 640 page tome. And it is heavy. <laughs> and there are two Mariahs that are, that are supposed to come. You know, the back of the book uh, was, uh, I wrote something that a fan sent me. And I kept it because it was very special. Malcolm Lombard sent this to me. Mm -hmm. And it has a special meaning today in the Me Too movement, which I fully support. There are women too gentle to live among wolves who toss them about like a lost and wounded dove such women are lonely in the merchant's world unless they have a gentle one to love. That's beautiful. Isn't that lovely? It's lovely. It's lovely. And uh, here's a picture of the poem on the back. I don't know if you Ronnie can see Ronnie took that. that picture. Yeah, Ron took this picture at one of your recording sessions. Right. And was it EMI or Nashville? No, in, in London. London, okay. All right. All right. Uh, this comes from Ron in Tucson, Arizona. And he would like to know, what male vocalist did you enjoy singing with? Enjoy singing with? Singing with, like Pat Boone or what? I enjoyed it? singing with Pat Boone. I enjoyed singing very much with Andy Williams. We did a great duet, a, call, uh, a song called Watch What Happens on his show. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed singing with him, okay. too. And of course, Bobby Darren. And of course, with Bobby. Absolutely, Bobby Darren. Um, this comes from Catherine in South Glastonbury, Connecticut. And she says, this isn't a question, but a warm story. Um, excuse me. It's Catherine in Marlton, New Jersey. Do you remember my dad, Frank's Colonel Inn, Colonial Inn, Golden Gate Lake? Absolutely remember <laughs> Colonial Inn. Oh, absolutely I remember that. She says, think of you often. 
Kathy, Katina Swanson. Oh, yes, of course, Kathy. I went to your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> of course I remember. This is wonderful. Isn't this wonderful? In fact, I talk about the old colonial in, mm -hmm. in, in my book. I tell a story about that. Oh, that's great. Yes. That's great. Now, this is from Christine in South Glastonbury, Connecticut. This isn't a question, but a warm story. I'm 57 years old and grew up with your name in my household. I had an imaginary friend and was making her your name and said Connie Fino to this day. And to this day, my family jokes with me about my imaginary friend Connie Fino. <laughs> Funny, but uh, I'm sure she enjoys herself with that story. Thank you, Christine. Um, this comes from Larry in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Did you ever figure out where the boys are? Well, I've met enough boys. Now I'm looking for some men. Absolutely. Well, he said that he keeps looking, but he can't find them. Now he <laughs> tells me. <laughs> would you like to sign another one? Yes, I would. Okay. And don't forget, you can go to ConnieFrancisBook.com and order your very own autographed copy, uh, personally signed by Connie. Connie, um, this comes from Fred in Decatur, Illinois, and he says, I watched you on board Navy ship during my service time, and I loved your music always. And that's Fred. He aboard what ship? He didn't mention the name. He just said aboard his Navy ship. There were two ships that I had performed at, the Oriskany and the Curacao. The Oriskany was the one that John McCain was on. Okay. So it was either one of those. Uh, this comes from... Um, Raymond in Essex, Maryland. Now, oh, that's not far from me. At what age were you when you decided you wanted to be a singer? I didn't decide. My father decided. Right. Um, I was four years old, and I did my first concert, and I sang Anchors Away in O Soli Mio in Italian and English. I was four years old at the Olympic Park in Irvington, New Jersey. Okay. You have all the details down, don't you? Yes, I remember that. I re <laughs> actually remember that. That's great. This comes from Jeffrey in Rockford, Illinois. Was there another film in the works after When the Boys Meet the Girls? And why were there no more films made? I didn't want to do any more films. I thought I was a terrible actress. Uh, I think your fans would disagree. Well, that was my opinion. I didn't want to do any more films after one. Actually, I didn't want to do When the Boys Meet the Girls either. Uh, but I had, I had to do it because I was under contract. Right, right. Josh from Phoenix, Arizona, would like to know, which of your recordings did you like the least? So many of them uh, that I can't. Uh, the Tiger and the Mouse. Uh. <laughs> it was a silly song. He's a scientist, another silly song. Uh, I always loved What About Whatever Happened to Rosemary. But it's another silly song. I love it. And so do your fans. <laughs> you know more about my music than I do, Diane. You really do. Well, I'm learning. I, I try. Okay. All right, Jim from Hackettstown, New Jersey. He asked, did you ever meet Steve McQueen? No. No? I did, never did. I would no reason. There would have been no way for your paths to have crossed, correct? No, not at that time. Okay. No. Not we'll see was alive. Okay. So remember, everyone, go to ConnieFrancisBook.com to order your autographed copy from Connie. And as I keep saying, it's five pounds, and it's heavy. Pick it up. Heavy. I need, I need muscles. Let me do it again. Okay. <laughs> Try putting one in each arm. Okay. Okay, this is from David from Macedonia, Ohio, and he asks, of all of your songs, which is the one you are proudest of for recording and performing live? Well, it's uh, not a question of, of uh, being proud of, and one, the one that is associated with me is where the boys are. About 50% of the time, I'll meet people and they'll say, oh, that's Connie Francis, where the boys are, as if it's one name. Right. So um, that's the song that, um, I'm most associated with, but the song I love doing best live uh, is Brother Can You Spare a Dime. Right. The whole album is fantastic. The, the Connie and Clyde Connie album. Connie and Clyde, yes. yes. It's my second favorite <clears throat> album. Right. 
Okay. Um, if I say so myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. All right, John um, from Maiden, Massachusetts writes, you've always had the best sense of humor. What's the funniest thing that happened to you while performing? Well, I swallowed a moth during Mama. You did? Yes. Was that one of your earlier performances? No, it was at the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, and they were fixing the roof. And I sang, and I screamed right in the middle. Of did you the, choke? Uh, no, no. I, I well, I got caught in my throat, and I screamed because I'm afraid of bugs. I'm afraid of <laughs> insects, insects and airplanes. Oh my goodness. Uh, Valerie from Lothian, Maryland. She writes, loved you in Where the Boys Are. What are your fondest memories of making that movie? And do you have any behind the scenes stories? Well, I was with the two wardens. I was with my mother and my Aunt Marie. <laughs> and they kept a watchful eye on me. I didn't have any fun at all doing that movie. Oh. And the, the uh, w one part of the movie that was hysterical was the fact that I can't swim. And I had to go into that tank of 10 foot, feet of water. Mm -hmm. And there were four men at the bottom of the tank ready to lift me to the surface as soon as I hit the bottom. Because you were petrified. I was petrified. And um, we did one take, and, and it, was, it was actually, it was something that kept me up for a week before we had to do the, the film. And um, I was supposed to say, Frank, Basil lost his glasses, meaning Frank Gorshin in, in, the, in the movie that uh, was played by Basil. And I said, I was so nervous that I said, Frank lost his glasses, and then plop, I went into the, into the water. So we had to do it all over again. Oh. I had to have my hair done again. I had to have my makeup done again, a new, new dress put on, and we had to do that whole horror scene all over again. You must have been so anxiety -ridden. Oh, I was. <laughs> I was a nervous oh, wreck. Oh, okay. I said, let someone else be it, Mr. Williams. <laughs> <laughs> Not Connie Francis. This comes from Helen in Spring Lake, New Jersey. Did you ever work with Frank Sinatra? And if so, do you have any stories? Um, yeah, I have lots of stories about Frank. Frank and I were friends. Uh, I remember um, one night, he saved a seat for me next to him. And he wanted to say it was a very special night for him. And he showed me, uh, he had tears in his eyes. And he, showed, he said, I want to show you the best gift I ever got. And he took out Gus Grissom's, at the astronaut's jacket, flight jacket, who uh, he had given it to Frank as a gift. And he had tears in his eyes. And he said, you know, Connie, sometimes we, think, we tend to think of ourselves as heroes, but it's those guys over there that are the real heroes. Come on, let's take a picture with them. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, this comes from Michael in San Jose, California. Connie, did you think before recording sessions on songs by Les Reed, Porter, Gershwin, Bacharach, and David, and, and, and how would you, uh, and about how you would sing them? Any certain feeling on your style at that time? Well, I didn't listen to the original records. Uh, I, I wanted to do my own interpretation of them. So I, I very rarely listened to the original records of, of these songs, of the Les Reed songs, the Bird Bacharach songs, uh, any, any of the classic songs. You like didn't that. want it to affect the way your own style might be? Right. OK, yeah. Here's another one. And uh, coming up in a little while, we've got something fun coming, and I didn't even tell you what it was, but you didn't, you didn't, don't, you want me to surprise you, right? I love surprises. Okay, well then, then I'm not going to, to mention it again. Um, but actually, um, actually, someone write, named Cord from Port Charlotte, Florida, writes, "Hi, Connie. Hope you've been well." Um, when will you be recording a new album? I'm not going to be recording anymore. Nothing new? No. Okay. I don't like the way I sing now. Okay. Okay. Um, this comes from, my screen keeps flipping. Okay. This comes from Sharon in Brook Park, Ohio. 
She writes, Dear Connie, are there any current popular singers that you like and why? Example, Lady Gaga or Pink? I like uh, Carrie Underwood. Carrie Underwood. Do you know why? I just think she sings with soul. Sings with soul. Wonderful. Okay. Well, remember, everyone, you can go to ConnieFrancisBook.com and get your autographed copy of this wonderful five-pound book. Want to hold it up? Get your exercise? <laughs> it's great. But I think it's time to play um, this little game. I mean, you're so good at Scrabble. We'll see how you do with this, okay? Okay. Okay. Is this where you're going to ask me questions, like a lot of questions in a, a short period of time? It's kind of like password, one of those. Oh, all right. Okay. I, yeah. Sound fun? I, yeah, I beat the record on password. You did? Yep. Okay, well, we have two minutes, but we'll be a little bit lenient. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, number one. Who inspires you the most? Judy Garland. Who would you want to play in your in play you in a movie? An unknown an unknown performer. Okay. What is your guilty pleasure? Food. What one thing do you need to have in your fridge at all times? Pizza that I can reheat. Okay. Do you have any hidden talents? None. What is your dream car? Uh, cars don't impress me. I, I uh, got in a Toyota last week, uh, and I have a Lexus, but I got in a Toyota. As long as it was white, it looks like the same car to me. Okay. Well, since I've known you, you've had five white cars. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first job? This is singing at um, Olympic Park when I was four. Okay. What is your favorite hobby? Playing Scrabble. Who is the last person you called or texted? Barbara, my friend Barbara, who's in the hospital. What is your favorite fruit? Um, watermelon. What is your biggest fear? Planes. What item would you love to get your hands on if it went up for auction? George Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite childhood memory? Um, my grandma. How do you take your coffee? I don't drink coffee. What is your biggest pet peeve? Egomaniacs. What color is your toothbrush? It's white. Who makes you laugh the most? Don Rickles. What is your middle name? Rosemary. What cause is dear to your heart? Veterans, the mentally ill, and crime victims. What is the last gift you received? Oh, the, the party that they gave for me at the Seminole Casino. Okay. That was a wonderful night. Yes, it was. They invited 650 people. It was great. Yes. Where do you want to go that you've never been? Greece. Greece. Okay. Well, that's it? I think that's it. But let me remind everyone. How about if you remind everyone? You tell them in your own words. Buy my book. <laughs> Buy your book. An autographed copy. An autographed copy. And it's good for workouts. And it's good for workouts. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna do a few more. Okay, so um, I guess it's probably time to say goodnight. I think, you wanna do one more? Mm -hmm. Just do one more, okay. and then we'll say goodbye to everyone. Okay. And while she's doing that, I would like to remind everyone that there are limited quantities. Um, Connie is gonna be, most of these are signed, but we still have some more here. Um, just go to ConnieFrancisBook.com. And I want to thank you, Diane, for doing this. See, you didn't want to do it. You thought you wouldn't be able to do it. Well. You did a great job. Thank you. I did it for you. Oh, uh, you did a great job. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank Diane. you. Every, say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>